In this video, I want you to enable custom triggers so they don't react like a normal command. It could react to a emote. It could be part of a sentence. What do you think of this? <laughs> you like it? Excuse us, please. Sure, talk amongst yourselves. Hello, and welcome to Stream Robot Bites where I cover how to set up and to make the most of the awesome streamer bot. There is one video per topic to make it easy as possible to follow and find. When relevant, sample import code will be provided to make it even easier for you to get started and to add functionality to your stream. So let's get started with the topic for this video. So to set up the custom trigger, copy the import code from the description below, go to your streamer bot and click on import. Paste in the import string, and you'll see there's an action and no command. You can import this multiple times and get multiple copies of it, because you may want to have multiple custom triggers. So we're going to import that, and we'll see it here is the action. What you do need to set is a trigger name. This means that the cues for the triggers to do the counts are going to be separate from each other. But if you want to have certain triggers to have the certain shared um, queue names, you could use the same name if you want to. You can then define the number of times the command needs to be used in a time frame, and a time frame in seconds. So by default, it's five times in 30 seconds. Then you have a cooldown. So that cooldown will decide how long you need to wait after it's been triggered once before it can trigger again. By default, this is 35 seconds. You might well want this to be larger. You got the code then, which will decide whether to say, okay, have a meta trigger or not. If it doesn't, then it doesn't continue the code. But if you have met the trigger, you'll do the message. So this could be something from playing a video or maybe doing a snap camera filter. So you could have emotes in chat, triggering a filter and snap camera, which match the emotes. And this is what's currently being used for. So we've got the actions set up at this point. You then need to set a command up. So in my example, I'll use Beetlejuice. Now the difference with this trigger, you don't generally put it at the start. You put it anywhere because it can be anywhere in a sentence. If it's an emote, for example, typically isn't at the start. We let anyone use it, so the default permissions are good. We select the custom command trigger, or you can rename it for each one you want to, to run. Global cooldown, this is important, especially if you have busy chat. You can take this off if it's not too busy in your chat, but if you have a lot going on, I'd highly recommend it, so you need to have it in five separate seconds, for example, or however many times you set. So it can only be triggered once per second. And there you go. That's it set up. So if Beetlejuice is run anywhere in a command, it's going to run the custom command trigger. That's going to make sure it hits a number of times in a number of seconds before it does the actions that you declare. Now the optional part of running through the code. So we've talked about the arguments already and the message that you set here. And again, this could really be anything you want. It could be an audio clip. It could be various things. So rather than having just one person to trigger it, you need multiple people. So let's execute code. What do we do here? So we look at the pulling the values in we declare. So the number of seconds that we have to do the actions, the number of times you need to hit that, and a cooldown. We then have the last trigger name, and we also have last uh, the time array name. So the last trigger is going to be the last time it was triggered, and so we can then know if it's a cooldown or not. That's what that's used for. The time array name, that's going to be the name which needs to be custom that's why we have the name path in there the trigger uh, the trigger name 
and this will store a list of the times it's been called in, in a sort of a number format in seconds. So what we do is we get the last trigger from this last trigger name and look at the now time. So the number of time in seconds now is a large number from uh, Unix time seconds, which is 1970 somewhere, uh, 1970 something somewhere. And we then look if the last trigger is um, not equal to one, which it starts off as. We then look at the last trigger plus cooldown is greater than now time. And it's too soon to trigger again. So we'll return false. Otherwise, we get the last trigger name. We set that to be one. We then have a, t a time array, which is a list of numbers, basically a list of these seconds. Again, we look at um, if it's the last trigger has not been set, we then basically set things up for use here. And what we do is bool done is false, and we basically check as long as we go through the time array and we've not um, told it to finish, we go through and we look at comparing them. If it's the time array is um, plus 30 seconds, so I need to change that before we go live because that needs to be the cooldown, is less than the now time then we will set that to be now time. And because that is not within the threshold, we set the done to true. So this means it's not going to continue throughout the loop because it's not worthwhile checking the rest of the array. What we then do is create a new array. And so if it's not done, as in it's gone through the list, we can then look at the having a new array. So we go through and we basically increase the length of that. And we then compare that to the number of times. So if we've basically hit the threshold, so we've triggered that, so we can clear that array, we can set that time array and then we can do the last trigger time as well. So we know not to run it again for the cooldown time. So if we're done, we stop, we set the global variables of the time array. If, it, if it's not done, then we use the new array. Please like and subscribe to be notified of more videos like this. If there's a topic you'd like covered, please do let me know in the comments or on Discord. Check out my Twitch stream to see the bot in action and for other examples. The links to my Twitch, social media and to streamer bots can be found at vrflad.com. Additional links to others that provide streamer bot content can be also found in the description. Finally, thank you Net for making a great bot and please consider supporting his Patreon which is linked from streamer.bot.